Casting Life Casts with Monster Clay. Today we're going to show how to heat up monster clay and brush or pour it into molds to create re-sculptable clay positives. Now the first step you'll need to create your clay pour is a crock pot. Now keep in mind once you melt clay in a crock pot, that is all that crock pot will be good for. So make sure you buy a crock pot just for this purpose and do not compromise your marriage or other relationships by co-opting other crock pots for this purpose. Now it's a good idea when you start melting a big block of monster clay to set your crock pot on low. Uh, you never want to exceed the manufacturer's recommended temperature for this which I believe is right around 200 degrees. Uh, the Monster Makers has put a pretty good labeling on these so you know exactly what the temperature threshold is of this particular clay. Now they come in these little containers like this. I just cut these away and just drop the whole block in my crock pot. Uh, so just cut off the edges here and tear away that packaging and just drop that entire chunk in your crock pot. That's the easiest way I've found to melt these little things down. You can also melt it in the microwave, but this is, in my opinion, much more user-friendly. Now, it'll take a little while to melt an entire block of monster clay. Typically, when you're melting down a block like this, you want to give yourself a, a good hour or two for it to really melt down and get to a nice liquid consistency so you can really brush or pour that into your mold. Now keep in mind, if you're pouring into an alginate mold, it is imperative that the clay not exceed the boiling temperature of water. So make sure, if necessary, use a, a thermometer just to check your temperature there, but you do not want to exceed boiling temperature. Now what we did here is after we pulled some life casts off my daughter's faces using some Genesis 5 alginate, we then made some silicone molds of the plaster positives made in a previous video. We had some hydrocal positives we cleaned up, and then we used those to create a one-piece gel tin mold. And this is a, a very straightforward mold using uh, just uh, three layers of gel tin brushed on to our positive, and then a layer of plaster bandages to create a reinforcement shell. And that's just a very simple mold that uh, easy to construct using extra gel tin you might already have around from other projects. And we went for that since we're going to use their faces for a variety of projects. We wanted to be able to cast both resin as well as clay into these molds. Now the first method I'm going to show here is brushing into a mold. Uh, this works really well for large pieces to brush the clay into the mold surface and build up the thickness that you want. This works really well if you don't have as much clay melted down where you can do a large pour. Uh, it also is a little bit safer in the sense that you don't have as much hot clay being poured around and there's not as much of a potential for a spill that you have when you're pouring the clay. Uh, when, with this particular method, it's also easier to avoid freeze lines since you're constantly overlapping uh, clay that's been brushed on with new clay that's still hot and helps uh, get rid of those freeze lines. Which freeze lines, by the way, are any place where the clay stops for a little bit and cools off and new clay is added. And what happens is you get a little line there occurring where new uh, cool clay meets uh, hot clay. And those are very difficult lines to sculpt out once they're in there. So the more you can avoid of freeze lines, the better off you'll be. Now, it's a good idea when you're brushing this in to make sure you give your layers of clay adequate time to cool before you put in more clay. Otherwise, you'll just wind up melting those away when you brush in another coat of clay. Now, one thing you can do is shut off your crock pot and let the clay start to thicken. And then when it gets that nice fudge consistency, you can go back in with a brush and use that to thicken up the surrounding edges. And you notice we're not filling in the cast completely. And the reason we want to leave it hollow is for a couple of reasons. One is by making it hollow, we, uh, we, we lower the shrinkage rate of the clay. And a hollow part like that will shrink a lot less than a solid cast. The other thing is we'll need access to the eye area since we're going to embed some uh, acrylic eyes later on. Now once we've built that up to the thickness that we want, we're going to trim away the uh, excess clay and check our overall thickness. 
Now, it's not crucial to have a uniform thickness everywhere, but it's still a good idea, a good practice to maintain about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch on your casting, just to have a decent strength to your uh, clay positive. And you can also, on really large casts, you can even back that up with rigid foam or with plaster to back up your uh, clay cast so it, you don't have to worry about it cracking or bending later on. A face cast like this is simple enough we don't have to worry about reinforcing it. But we still have to be very careful that we don't accidentally distort our casting. Now keep in mind, since monster clay is remeltable, just uh, wad up any extra clay and throw that in your crock pot and melt it back down. Now we're going to take another mold, a similar face mold that we did at the same time, and now we're going to pour that one as opposed to brushing it in. And when you're pouring, it's a good idea just to gently slosh that around and pour that back into your crock pot. Now you'll notice we filled up the mold completely. And the reason I filled up the mold completely was to avoid freeze lines. It's really tricky. Anytime you fill up a mold partially and stop the clay from moving, you might get a freeze line there between uh, clay that is cooled and clay that's hot being poured in after that. So it's a good idea if you've got a mold like that to fill it up completely and dump it back out to avoid those freeze lines. Now, uh, once our clay has cooled down a little bit, we're ready to make a second pour. And again, you want to be real careful that you don't that you wait an adequate amount of time between layers of clay so you don't wind up just melting back down that first layer of clay. And again, uh, you want to do this several times to build up a, an adequate thickness of clay. And a lot of times I'll unplug my crock pot and allow the crock pots to start cooling so that the clay is not too hot. So it's, we only have really hot clay on that first layer. Another step you can do is to wash the back with some cool water. Just splashing that around on the back of the face cast will cool it down and help that demold a little bit faster if you're pressed for time. Now for our clay cast here, we, we're going to need a good flat baseboard. So I'm just going to flip over that mold onto a piece of foam core. Now we've shown how to sculpt open eyes in a previous video, but I wanted to show a couple of alterations on that technique uh, with, uh, for both a clay positive re-sculpted for a film prop and a clay positive re-sculpted for a, an artistic face cast. Now the first thing you want to do is very carefully cut away the part of the eyelid where the eye will be open. And what I usually do is use the, the eyelash area as a beginning point there to make sure I'm, I'm getting the uh, right point of the eye cut away. And then I cut away kind of a teardrop shape where it's wider towards the bridge of the nose and then tapers back out towards the, uh, the eyelash area on the side. And we're going to sculpt part of that back in with clay, but that's a good starting point to make sure we have our spacing right and we'll be able to, to get our eyes positioned properly before we start sculpting. And we're not going to go into a whole lot of uh, technique here. There's a lot of different ways to sculpt from this point. Um, the main thing here is the proper positioning of the eyes and then anchoring those using some additional clay. And you'll notice our life casts here are very fresh out of the mold. So it's a good idea to be very careful at this stage since our, our clay is, is still a little on the warm side. We're kind of rushing it here for the sake of the video. It's a good idea when you're doing this process to really let your clay positive sit for a few hours to really firm up to room temperature before you start sculpting. Now I've found a dental spatula is one of the handiest tools for going in around the eyelids and, and squaring off that lower lid to create a realistic lower lid and uh, also correcting the shape of that upper lid once that's been conformed to the acrylic eye. Now we're going to do this two ways. We're going to do uh, a quick overview of the two different processes. Uh, if we're going to create, say, a prop head where we need it to have open eyes, and you might have seen this in some of our other videos, what what we're going to do is use these acrylic eyes as placeholders for the acrylic eyes that will ultimately be, or glass eyes for that matter, that will be in the final silicone head uh, when we cast that up in silicone. Since we've used eyes that are the, roughly the same shape, we'll be able to trim those out and replace those in silicone with the, uh, with the glass or acrylic eyes. Now one thing you'll find when you're sculpting eyelids 
is that the lower eyelid, and this is one of those things you want to look in the mirror or make sure you take lots of good reference pictures of your subject, uh, because your lower eyelid actually raises a little bit when you open your eyes. When you close your eyes, your lower eyelid is actually uh, pulled, pushed down a little bit. So in order to create a realistic eyelid there, you want to actually bring that eyelid up just a little bit, especially towards the outside of the eye. And the same for the, the upper eyelid, you want to make sure that it accurately overlaps the lower eyelid out towards the, the side of the face. And again, this is just an overview of the sculpting process. There's a lot of other finer detail you can do by using some brushes to put in a lot of finer texture and uh, create uh, more accurate wrinkles here. But we want to give you a quick overview of a couple of different techniques here that, that work well for this process. Now, once we get our eye sculpted out and uh, the eyelids re-sculpted the way we want those on both sides of the face, and it takes a while to really nail that down. Sometimes it takes just stepping back and looking at the face for a little bit and getting it to look like it's looking back at you. When it really feels like you're, you're having a couple of eyes looking back at you, you know you've got it. And once we get that down accurately, now if we're making a prop where it's going to be a silicone prop that's going to have realistic eyes, then uh, we're done. That's all we need uh, to then move along to our step where we make a a rubber mold or a hydrocal mold or what have you because then those acrylic eyes will provide that the right spacing to then put those eyes back into the silicone cast later on. Now I wanted to show here a method for creating an artistic cast where we could then again remold this and make either a cold cast bronze copy or a hydrocal positive or something like that. What we're going to do is poke those eyes back out and now that we've got those little allowances we're going to roll up some clay balls and press those into place in those sockets. Now once we've got those in place, since our eyelids are already uh, ready for this, all we have to do is create the iris and the pupil. And to do that we're going to use a highlighter pen, just the end of a highlighter, press that in, and then for the pupil we're going to create that using the end of our dental spatula. Since that's kind of an octagon tool, we want to twist that a little bit so we don't wind up with a, a square edge there. And there you have it, a clay cast in monster clay, re-sculpted with the eyes open. And keep in mind this can be done on entire bodies, hands, all kinds of things can be cast in clay and re-sculpted this way. And of course all of the supplies are available on our web store.